We all remember logging into WoW for the very first time. You had one ability, your auto attack for whatever reason, some food, and these absolutely atrocious default binds. Fast forward, what's changed in 20 years? Well, we may have a new ability, no longer have our auto attack, and for some reason have lost our food, but you're still met with the exact same awful binds. Now, hopefully none of you watching this are still using these, meaning at some point in all our journeys, we all went through the same process of picking and assigning new binds. But what if I told you those very binds could be holding you back from reaching your true potential in Arena? So if you're ready to make a change, then log into the game and park yourself next to a target dummy, as we're about to walk you through exactly how to set up and optimize your keybinds like a rank 1 player. First though, before we even begin binding our abilities, there are some very important settings you need to change, and it's all to do with one thing, movement. When you load up World of Warcraft, like most games, your movement keys are set to WASD. While this is fine, there's one very big issue here. A and D are by default set to turn left and turn right. Many of you will probably have heard the phrase keyboard turning at some point. Well, this is where it comes from, and while there's obviously a lot of variation between binds, you'll never find any top player keyboard turning. A lot of players opt for just straight up swapping A and D from turn to strafe to keep the standard WASD movement, while others just stick with QWE instead and rebind A and D for abilities. There's definitely a valid argument that WQE is slightly more optimal as it gives you somewhat easier access to the number keys, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. Just use whatever is more comfortable or whatever you're used to here. Now, as for why strafing is so important, it's simple. It gives you greater control and freedom in how you move your character, especially in situations where you need to utilize your mouse, such as killing a totem, for instance. As if your keyboard turning in the same direction, the second you let go of your right click, well, yeah. But to build on this further, if you've watched any WoW content, you'll quickly notice that good players tend to jump all the time. Sometimes this is just by habit, other times it's just ADHD. But more often than not, there's actually a really good reason for this, and it's all still to do with movement. You see, when you jump in the direction that you're currently strafing, you carry the momentum for around the length of a GCD, freeing you to take your fingers off your movement keys to use any instant cast abilities of your choice. To best show you what we mean by this, say you're a mage that moves with WASD and has Cone of Cold bound to R. You can actually follow along with this at home. Take your left hand and rest it on WASD, pretend you're strafing to the right by holding D in order to kite in that direction, now try to press R. In order to do it comfortably, you're habitually going to remove your index finger, the same finger you're using to strafe, in turn pausing your movement slightly. Now compare this to if you use spacebar to carry your movement instead. Mid-air, I'm able to move my index finger up to R, hit the bind, and then move it back down to D without any lapse in movement. This is why jumping is so good. All right, so you've set up your strafe keys and now your movement is smoother than ever. The final step before we get into binds is to make sure you have the right camera settings. As you're probably aware, by holding in left click, you're able to look around with your camera without having to change the way your character is facing. Now, hopefully you don't need me to tell you why this is important. The issue here though is that by default, if you're moving, your camera will always snap back, giving you only a brief amount of time to see anything behind or to the side of you. In order to fix this, hit escape, go into your options, and type camera in the search bar. By default, like we mentioned, you'll see the camera is set to only while moving. You'll want to swap this to never. This then just allows you to still rotate your camera and look around freely even while moving. Anyway, now that we have movement covered and the default settings optimized, there's one more step before we can start key binding, setting up your bars. Now, with most classes having a spell book that can only be compared to the menu at the Cheesecake Factory, we don't just want to drag everything onto your bars willy-nilly and immediately start binding things. The best advice we could ever give you here is to start by grouping your abilities in a way that makes sense. This not only simplifies the process of binding them, but also allows you to see what your cooldowns are at any given time in an instant. But before we start, now is also a great time to ensure you have your bars, unit frames, and the rest of your add-ons set up in a way that enables you to easily see all the relevant information. The more time you spend here, the better. And if you want to start completely from scratch, this could even take an entire day or more, which is why we produce the brand new skill-capped add-on package. In just one click, you'll install the best and most popular PvP UI around, complete with every add-on you'll ever need, proven to supercharge your damage through our custom-designed nameplates, elevate your awareness through our one of a kind custom Omni Bar and Omni CD profile, and even provide you with must have weak auras to ensure you never miss a critical cooldown again. So don't waste hours of your precious time. Head over to skillcap.com using the links below and install the full PvP UI in just a matter of seconds. 
Anyway, back to the video. Sorting and grouping your abilities on your bars like this isn't only useful for improving your awareness on your main, in fact, it's this exact method that the majority of top players use in order to seamlessly swap and perform well on multiple alts, so it's proven to work. In order to do this, we're going to want to separate our action bars into the following categories. Rotational abilities, offensive cooldowns, crowd control, defensives, and mobility. So let's take a Shadow Priest as an example here. Frequently used damage abilities like Vampiric Touch, Mind Blast, Devouring Plague, and Mind Flay can be grouped for rotational abilities. Offensive cooldowns like Void Eruption, Shadow Fiend, and Void Torrent can be grouped. Then defensive cooldowns like Dispersion and Desperate Prayer can also be in one section. You can then repeat this process for CC and Mobility. Another very common way to build on this is to change the icons of abilities that don't have cooldowns. For example, as a Shadow Priest, you never need to check if Vampiric Touch is available since it has no cooldown. So you can create a macro with slash cast Vampiric Touch, but use the Mind Blast icon with Show Tooltip Mind Blast. This way your rotational abilities stay grouped, but it makes it much easier to see when the abilities you care about are ready. If you've ever noticed top players having the same ability on their bar multiple times, this is the reason why. So with our abilities wrapped into neat little categorized packages on our action bars, it's time to start adding some key binds. Now, many of you may have heard experienced players say, don't copy my binds, find what works best for you, and it's mostly true. Copying the best player's exact key binds will likely end up terribly for you since our hands, keyboards, and setups are all very different. Instead, the first thing we'll need to do is figure out what actually constitutes a good key bind. In order to do this, we've broken down the most easily accessible keys and ranked them for you so you can decide for yourself which binds you prefer. Don't worry too much though as in our next step, we'll go more in depth into specific ability assignments. Starting with our S tier binds. Here we've got the numbered keys 1 through 4 and either Q, E or A, D depending on your strafe binds, R, F, C and then finally mouse button 4 and 5. These are the two side buttons on a standard mouse. Our reasoning for this is simple. It's all about how quickly and comfortably you can press these keybinds while maintaining full control of your character. Take my personal favorite keybind, R, as an example. Whether you're strafing left or moving forward, it's one of the most accessible and comfortable keys to spam. Then even if you're strafing right, you can still comfortably hit it by using the jump technique we covered earlier. Moving on to the A tier, we have 5, T, G, and V. These make the A tier since they are all still easily accessible with your hands being anchored to your movement keys, but just require slightly more stretching. Next, as we drop down into our B tier, we've got two binds, Z and X, that although are both still relatively easy to press, will start to cause a significant increase in the time it takes you to reach and get your hands back to the movement keys. For instance, try pressing Z while jumping or strafing left. It's doable, but when compared to an S tier bind like C, takes slightly longer and isn't as comfy. Last up in our lowest tier are a set of binds that require a much more significant stretch of the hand, 6, Y, H, and B. Again, these are all usable, but definitely wouldn't be binds you'll want to be pressing frequently. As for anything past H on your keyboard, if you're using those keys frequently, I can only assume that you're the same people they designed Pringle cans for. And there you have it. Here's a handy recap of our tier list if you want it for later. Now though, it's time to start allocating these binds to the correct abilities. One of the most common mistakes players make when assigning keybinds is assigning their best binds to abilities without considering how often they actually use them. Take a defensive like Void Shift, for example. For all three pre-specs, this is arguably one of their most important abilities, period. It's off the global cooldown and needs to be able to be pressed on a whim without any delay. Surely it deserves a good bind, right? Maybe even something like three? Well, great, but now you've just assigned one of your best and most comfortable keybinds to an ability you use once every arena game. No, instead, we want to give our best binds to not necessarily the most important abilities, but the ones we press the most. To illustrate this, let's take a popular spec like Marksmanship Hunter as an example. Heading over to our website and taking a look at our sustained rotation video, which is just one of many videos in our brand new damage courses available for every spec, we can see that the basic rotation primarily consists of rapid fire, aimed shot, kill shot, arcane shot, and steady shot. Knowing that, let me walk you through my logic. From my understanding of Marksmanship Hunter, I know that although I still use aimed shot frequently, in most cases it's going to be at a time when I'm stationary. For me personally, because of this, I'd prefer to put it on 1, as that's the S tier bind I like the least when having to press it on the move. Kill shot is something that's used when I get a proc or when the target is low, but as it's instant will often be used while on the move, so I'm going to put it on a slightly more comfortable bind for me when moving, with that being 2. Arcane Shot follows more or less the same logic. You press it more often than Kill Shot, and again, while on the move, I'm going to assign it to 3. 
Rapid Fire, on the other hand, I know is my number one priority and something I'll get constant resets of, in my eyes, making it more or less my main ability, which I'd compare to things like Mutilate, Mortal Strike, Ice Lance, those types of abilities, so for that reason, I'm going to put it on R leaving just Steady Shot, which I'll then put on 4. Following the same logic, let's work in some frequently pressed but relatively short cooldowns to the A tier slots, which means the Dark Ranger ability Black Arrow can go on T, An Explosive Shot can go on V. Finally, we can put longer damage cooldowns on to B tier binds as we press them far less frequently, so I'll go ahead and put True Shot on X. With a few of these key binds now filled out and after practicing and getting a feel for it on the dummy, there's one slight problem. For me to press True Shot, which is off the global cooldown, and then go immediately into an aimed shot for the optimal burst sequence, it just feels, well, slightly awkward. Try to press X and then 1 at the same time. See what I mean? Well, the next step to perfecting your keybinds is to always consider what spells do I often need to use together, and does my keybind layout make it easy to do? While it's no question that True Shot doesn't deserve an S tier bind, you can't assign it to the X key without considering how you sequence it. So, how do we solve this problem? Easy. We use what's called a modifier. Modifier keys are a special key on the keyboard that will temporarily modify the normal action of another key when pressed together, also known as Shift, Control, and Alt. With Shift being the best of the three by a long shot due to its optimal position for your otherwise inactive pinky finger to utilize. When thinking about modifiers, at face value, they seem like an easy way to get as many spells into the S tier keys as possible. While partly true, you can easily go wrong when following this logic, so listen up as there's three rules you want to follow here. Rule 1, consider spell sequencing. If we think about our true shot problem from just a second ago, hitting X followed by 1 for aimed shot felt too clunky in practice, so instead, why don't we assign true shot to either shift or control 1. Now try to do that instead, hit shift 1, then immediately let go of shift and hit the same key. Easy, right? The second rule to follow is slightly bittersweet as it will wipe out a lot of your available modifier slots. Rule number two, use modifiers for focus binds of the same spell. To play Arena optimally, you're going to need either focus or Arena 1-2-3 binds for important crowd control abilities. So for my hunter, if I want to have scatter shot bound to G, it would make sense to then have focus scatter shot set to shift G. Now we understand rules one and two, let's put them together to illustrate the reason why these rules are important. For the sake of an example, say you're a rogue with kick bound to three, naturally per our rules, that means focus kick should be shift three. But imagine focus step was mouse button 4. These are two off-global abilities that are frequently sequenced at the same time in order to produce a rogue special move, the shadow step kick. But with my binds, if I try doing this, I'm going to have to hit mouse button 4 and then press shift and hit 3 all at the exact same time. However quick I do it, there's always going to be some delay. But if I just simply change my focus shadow step bind to instead be shift mouse button 4, well, now I can do this entire sequence without letting go of my modifier, making it much easier to execute. Last up, we have rule number three, keep important defensives away from modifiers. This one is very straightforward. Dying without using a cooldown sucks. But imagine you drop dangerously low and are in a little bit of a panic, such as life. But ask yourself, what are you going to hit faster, shift R or just R? I know what one I'd hit faster. Again though, factor in our previous two rules, mainly in this case your PvP trinket or gladiator's medallion. If we have turtle on T, we will want our trinket to not include a modifier either, as just like with harpoon and trap, we'll want it to be easy to sequence them together. Alright guys, by now you're likely on track to create a solid set of binds with what we've taught thus far. But before we get to arguably the most important step of this guide, there are just a couple of hidden gems worth mentioning. These are binds that are not used by the masses simply because they are not super obvious, but for those that are aware of them, they unlock some excellent binds that are incredibly easy to press. Let's start with our first hidden OP bind, Tab. Most players use Tab for switching targets, as that's the default setting. While it works, especially for melee, it's more limiting compared to manually binding your targeting, which we'll cover next. But if Tab targeting is something you rarely do, consider integrating Tab into your bindings instead. Next is Tilda. If you look at your keyboard, Tilda is the button to the left of 1. As a whole, Tilda is just a key that most people neglect entirely, as it doesn't really have a purpose for most people. However, when it comes to binds, Tilda is honestly just as good as 1, making it an S tier bind. Then we've got the F keys. To be real with you, this isn't a secret, especially for the older generation. Shout out to those of you that played Diablo 2. But even today, a lot of players still utilize their F keys, and if you can get comfortable with them and have a smaller keyboard, F1 to F4 can be just as effective as using your number keys. Something also often neglected is your mouse wheel. Mouse wheel up, mouse wheel down, and then clicking your mouse wheel in. Combine these with modifiers and alone can open up the potential for up to 9 extra binds. And the last hidden keybinds are actually a set of binds that almost no one realizes they can use. 
movement keys, and spacebar with modifiers. So that's QWE or WAD and spacebar combined with either shift, alt, or control. Now, these are personally my least favorite as they will hinder your ability to jump or move, making them not ideal for commonly utilized abilities. But for longer cooldowns or even things like buffs, your mount, water, or anything like that, they're good options. Phew, okay, that was a lot. But when it comes to setting up your binds, it's definitely worth investing the time. We've certainly come a long way, but we've left the most important step for last, figuring out the best targeting keybinds possible. Now, listen, targeting binds are something some people may classify as optional, and granted, yes, many players do fine without them, but I'm going to be real with you for a moment, and this is coming from somebody who played the majority of my WoW career without them. If you don't use targeting binds, you are missing out. If you're new to WoW, great, start as you mean to go on. Otherwise, if you're somebody like me who hates change and was set in my ways, this is your sign to take the leap. You will not regret it. Anyway, there are multiple frames you can target with binds, including Arena 123, Focus 123, and Target Party Member 12 and Self. This seems like a lot, but the ones you prioritize depend on your role. As any damage dealer, you should prioritize binding Focus Arena 123. Being able to quickly change your focus is incredibly important for not only utilizing your focus macros, but also for taking full advantage of your focus frame to gain more information. As for target arena 1, 2, 3, it's still just as important. Ideally, in a perfect world, you want both, but if you're just going to settle for one, I'd opt for focus. Clicking nameplates or just tabbing between targets is of course less optimal, but far less detrimental. As a healer, you should instead prioritize making binds to target party 1, 2, and yourself. You can then pair this up with Focus Arena 123 if you have the binds to do so. And as for what binds to use for these, we've yet to mention them, but MMO mouses here are like a cheat code. Arena, like we know, is three targets, and most of these mice have three buttons in a row, but they're obviously by no means required. The main piece of advice here, though, is to pick three binds in a row, as it's just a lot more intuitive. Common options are binds like Shift Control or Alt 123, F1, F2, and F3. Again, you can use modifiers if you want and then ZXC. Then something a lot of top healers take advantage of is their mouse wheel. You can do mouse wheel up for party one, mouse wheel down for party two, and then click your mouse in to target yourself. But of course, you could use these for enemy and focus targeting as well. Anyway, while targeting binds may seem intimidating at first, they're undoubtedly one of the best ways to make your gameplay faster and more reliable. Now though, with a perfect set of binds and a complete UI, all that's really left to do is check out our brand new class courses. I mean, you made it this far, and really, what's there to lose? As Skillcap.com is the only place that promises you will gain 400 rating or your money back, no questions asked. That's a huge promise, but a promise we can deliver. Why? Because we worked with these guys, BlizzCon champions, AWC champions, players with more rank 1 titles than we can count on our fingers. And it's these very players that give you step-by-step -step walkthroughs of how they do the maximum damage possible providing you with step-by-step -step burst sequences, discussing how they approach openers, and provide the decision-making and thought processes behind what they're doing to actually win games. So to get started with everything you need in the new expansion, be sure to check out the exclusive offer below and learn how you can gain 400 rating risk-free. Anyway, that about wraps this video up. As always though, we wanna thank you all for watching and making it to this point in the video. Let us know in the comments below what video topics you would like us to cover next. Until then, we wish you the best of luck on your keybinding journey.